What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today we're gonna to be talking about Tesla and how they raised supercharging prices pretty much across the board and how that impacts you whether you drive a Tesla or not. If you're new here, you might not realize that I've been to well over 500 unique supercharging stations. I personally owned a Model S 70D I sold with 198,000 miles, and Kaylee owned a also 2015 Model S 70D that we sold with about 210,000 miles. So if you wanna look into my Tesla road tripping experience, as well as my ID4 road trip experience, definitely check out some of my previous videos. But let's dive into how Tesla raised their supercharging costs. You're joining me in the ID4 now. Let's go into a little bit more detail on Tesla's supercharging price increases. But first, let's start with a little bit of background on Tesla's supercharging billing. Historically, there's been two different ways that Tesla bills for supercharging use. There's either per minute in states that don't allow per kilowatt hour billing, or there's per kilowatt hour billing. So it's basically either time-based or energy-based, and Tesla prefers energy-based where they're legally allowed to do so. Uh, the reason that there are laws in a in place to stop Tesla and other companies from doing this actually dates back to um, apartments and housing and things like that, marking up electricity charges and then reselling it to residents. So it doesn't really have anything to do with electric vehicle charging. However, there are laws in place that only allow energy companies to sell energy. So essentially a lot of these EV charging companies workaround has been to charge per minute. Um, some networks just have a flat per minute fee like Evgo in most cases. Um, Electrify America has two different tiers. They have one to 90 kilowatt and then they have 90 plus kilowatt as their two tiers. And up until very recently, Tesla only had two tiers of per minute billing for supercharging and it was zero to 60 kilowatt and 60 plus kilowatt. And now Tesla has introduced four tiers for time-based supercharging billing, and those are from zero to 60 kilowatt, from 60 to 100 kilowatt, from 100 to 180 kilowatt, and then 180 to 250 plus, I guess, kilowatt, being that they don't have any superchargers that go beyond 250 currently. So let's just talk about one station in particular. Um, we're gonna be talking about Bismarck, North Dakota. However, there are 12 states Plus or minus a few, I could be wrong based on slightly outdated information. It's very hard to verify this without having a Tesla to look on the nav screen. Um, if I'm wrong, please correct me, but last I can tell it was 12 states that had per minute supercharging billing, uh, and North Dakota is one of those, and being from the Midwest, I'm fairly active in those Tesla clubs, so I was able to get some time-based billing from the Bismarck, North Dakota uh, Tesla supercharger and this is a V3 station so it does do up to 250 kilowatt. So until roughly last week, uh, we're now in mid-November 2021, there were two tiers, 0 to 60 kilowatt, that was 12 cents per minute, and 60 plus kilowatt, that was 24 cents a minute. And now with the new tiers, 0 to 60 kilowatt is 17 cents per minute, 60 to 100 kilowatt is 45 cents per minute and 100 to 180 kilowatt is 84 cents a minute and wait for it 180 to 250 kilowatt is a dollar 35 per minute so that's all fine and dandy but what does that mean for you when you're actually charging your car let's go into that so i've come up with three examples zero to 60 percent zero to 80 percent and zero to 100 percent I realize 0 to 100% is not really a super real world example of charging when you're on the road. However, I think it does speak a bit of volume to how much it costs to fully charge your vehicle, which I think is a pretty common question from those that don't own EVs yet because they don't realize you don't typically charge all the way to 100%. And while we're on that topic, let's talk about how vehicles charge a little bit. So in an electric vehicle, typically with a few exceptions, the way a charging curve works is you start out with putting a ton of power into the battery. So on a Model Y, which is what we're using for the ex examples today, you start out at about 110 kilowatt or so until you get to about seven or 8%. Then 
then you fully ramp up to about 250 kilowatt and then from there you slowly start trickling down until you get to about 40 kilowatt at 80 percent and what having a charging curve means when you're being billed per minute at least in the case of tesla is that throughout the course of your charging session you're actually going to be passing through these different pricing tiers so on a model y doing a zero to 100 you're going to be going from the zero or from the 100 to 180 tier and then up to the 180 to 250 tier and then back down to the 100 to 180 tier and then down to the 60 to 100 tier and then down to the 0 to 60 tier as you get towards the end being that that charging speed does taper so let's talk about my first example here 0 to 60 percent which i think is a fairly real world example of a charging session when you're on the road maybe not starting at zero but you'd probably start around five to ten percent if you're road tripping properly um, and just for reference for the data for this video, I actually used the Model Y charging curve that Kyle over at Out of Spec Reviews recorded with his mom's Model Y. Um, I'll put a link down below for that charging session just so you can kind of get an idea of what the charge curve looks like. Tesla does change their charge curves pretty often, um, so this is at least accurate at time of that recording, but it shouldn't be too off even if the charge curve has changed a little bit. So 0 to 60% uses 45 kilowatt hour. So in a energy-based state like California, they have two tiers depending on time. Uh, if you're doing it in their higher tier, it's 48 cents a kilowatt hour. That zero to 60 percent would cost 21 dollars and 60 cents. Or if you're in the lower tier, which is 24 cents a kilowatt hour, it would cost 10 dollars and 80 cents. Depending on where you are in the U.S., um, you're probably going to be somewhere in the middle of those two, so probably around 15 dollars. Um, and with the old charging tiers at the Bismarck North Dakota supercharger you would spend 19 minutes charging and you would spend zero minutes in the 0 to 60 kilowatt tier and you would jump right up to the 60 plus kilowatt tier and spend 19 minutes there that was 24 cents uh, per minute and that would cost four dollars fifty six cents for that 19 minute charging session and you would add 45 kilowatt hour that would bring your kilowatt hour cost to 10 cents per kilowatt hour. That's really cheap for reference. Um, that's about the cost of charging at home in lower cost states as far as energy cost. And now we come to the new charging costs. Uh, you would spend two minute, or sorry, with a with the new supercharging billing, you would spend. 3.25 or three and a quarter minutes in the 100 to 180 kilowatt tier you would then move up to the 180 to 250 kilowatt tier for five and three quarter minutes you would then drop back down to the 100 to 180 tier for another eight minutes and then in the 60 to 100 kilowatt tier for two minutes and the total cost for that would be eighteen dollars and eighty nine cents just in case you want to skip the math, that's 4.14 times the previous cost. So you went from $4.56 to go from 0 to 60%, all the way up to $18.89. That's crazy. That That's a huge price increase. Uh, and that per kilowatt hour cost is $0.42 cents a kilowatt hour, which isn't too outrageous. Um, but to go from 10 cents a kilowatt hour to 42 cents a kilowatt hour effective energy cost is a huge jump. Now we'll move to zero to 80% charging. Uh, so that's about 60 kilowatt hour. And in energy based states, that'd be between 2880 and 1440 with 48 and 24 cent uh, rates. So real world, you're probably looking at around 20, $22 or so, depending on your state and the local rates uh, for supercharging. Old supercharging time-based tiers, you'd be looking at two and a half minutes in the zero to 60 kilowatt tier as you get towards that 80%, and 28 and three quarter minutes at the 60 plus kilowatt tier. Your cost for that charging session from zero to 80% would be $7.20, and having an effective per kilowatt hour cost of 12 cents, so very cheap. Um, with the new rates, you would be spending $22.92. That's 3.18 times the cost, 
or an effective per kilowatt hour rate of 38 cents a kilowatt hour. And now we drop jump to zero to 100% charging, which again, not a great real world example, but just to give you a full charging session, that's about 75 kilowatt hour on per kilowatt hour states. You'd be looking at about 36 to $18 or so. Um, realistically, probably around $25, depending on your state, if you're being billed per kilowatt hour. Uh, that's assuming you're not in California and you have rates somewhere around low to mid 30 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, so zero to 100 charge on old tiers, you'd be looking at 28 and three quarter minutes at 60 plus kilowatt hour. That's $6.90 right there. And 34 and a quarter minutes at zero to 60 kilowatt tier. And that's $4 and 11 cents. And with the new charging session, you would start out in the 100 to 180 kilowatt tier, three and a quarter minutes. You would then jump to the 180 to 250 kilowatt tier for five and three quarter minutes. And then you would drop back down to the 100 to 180 kilowatt tier for another eight minutes. You'd be in the 60 to 100 kilowatt tier for 11 and three quarter minutes. And then you'd be in the zero to 60 kilowatt tier for 34 and three quarter minutes or sorry, 34 and a quarter minutes. And your charging cost for that session would be $28.32. Uh, that's 2.57 times the cost of the old tiers or an effective per kilowatt hour price of 38 cents a kilowatt hour compared to the old cost of 14 cents a kilowatt hour. So you're probably wondering, Brandon, you mentioned this applies to non-Tesla owners as well, but I'm only hearing about Tesla things. You are correct. So the way that this impacts you, even if you don't own a Tesla, is that essentially right now there are monopolies on charging. If you own a non-Tesla, you're essentially limited to Electrify America for long distance travel. Sure, there's Evgo, ChargePoint, but those aren't really positioned for long uh, distance travel. And with the Tesla, you're essentially limited to Tesla superchargers. Tesla no longer sells their Chatmo adapter and currently in North America doesn't have a CCS adapter. So right now, if you own a Tesla and you're wanting to do road trips, there's a monopoly on your charging. You have no other option but to use Tesla superchargers. And with Tesla increasing their costs like this, it kind of shows that those monopolies aren't working for the favor of the consumer. And they can essentially do whatever they want whenever they want to increase costs. Versus if you owned a gas car, there's a gas station on pretty much every corner. And if one of the gas stations raises their cost you would just go to the one next door that's cheaper in theory, if there was one, which helps keep those prices down. And just to give another example and point of reference with those supercharging costs, I did look up the average gas price for regular gasoline in the county that Bismarck, North Dakota is in, and it's $3.17 a gallon for regular unleaded. And if you do that just for easy math, 10 gallons in a 40 mile per gallon car, you're getting about 400 miles of range essentially for about $31.70 versus zero to 100 in a Model Y is real world probably low 200 miles, uh, even though it's rated for like low 300s. But if you're in North Dakota, the speed limit is either 75 or 80. You're going pretty quick, so you're definitely burning through more range. And if you're getting 40 miles per gallon in that gas car, you're getting 400 miles of range versus low 200s for pretty much the same cost, 28 and change versus 31 and change. That makes the gas car a lot easier sell versus the Tesla. Even if the Tesla does drive better, it takes away a lot of that cost benefit that was previous there or previously there with electric vehicles, at least in North Dakota. I did want to mention that I do think that the shift to four tiers of supercharging cost does make sense. Uh, the 60 or the zero to 60 and 60 plus was a very outdated uh, tier system based on essentially version one superchargers, not even like version two superchargers that will do up to 150 kilowatt. It was based on 120 kilowatt supercharging. And that, at that time, it kind of made sense. Um, a Model Y or sorry, a Model 3 at the time, which was the only Tesla that had paid charging, would essentially sit in that 60 plus kilowatt tier all the way until the end-ish, around 80-90% or so, so it made sense. However, 
now with version three superchargers, we have supercharging up to 250 kilowatt, and that brings on a lot higher demand charges. And what demand charges are, are the fees that utility providers charge to DC fast charger operators and just other high power use industrial power uh, customers. So essentially they're being billed by their highest demand over one hour over the course of the entire month typically and they're having that multiplied by a multiplier typically 10 to 30 dollars it, it really depends so that demand charge could be in the thousands of dollars if it's a very high use supercharger and one day of that month there was a full station uh, even if the entire rest of the month they only had one car there at a time and with that, they do have pretty low kilowatt hour costs, um, but that does add significantly to their energy bill and is why DC fast charging is such a hard business case to make unless you're making money somehow else. So where does this leave us for how DC fast charging will continue to evolve? Uh, the president just signed a new bill that was enabling uh, $7.5 billion to DC fast charger build out. I really hope to see that those are reasonably priced um, and that there's some sort of oversight there to make sure that they're actually maintained. Um, I do hope that we have some competition develop in the DC fast charging world. Uh, I realize that having crazy low costs is not commercially viable or a vi viable business plan, um, but we do need to have that equilibrium of sorts that it's still cheaper than gas or it's going to be a very hard sell, especially since you're having to wait to charge. So the kind of double stabbing of it costs more and it takes longer most people aren't going to be willing to put up with that versus just driving their gas car even if the electric car drives better so we have to do something there i would love to hear what you guys think about this um, whether you think it makes sense to increase prices what you think is a reasonable price for supercharging or other dc fast charging and hopefully you guys enjoyed this if you did hit the like button down below if you want to see more content, hopefully you do, uh, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below, and we'll see you next time.